side of this church as well. Uh, but we are so glad all of you are here and everyone looks so pretty with the Mother's Day outfits on today. Uh, all our members, all our guests, anybody that we have visiting today, we appreciate you being here and all of our people worshiping with us online today. Uh, I think the, uh, the crafter, the crafty crafter, whatever their name is, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> creative yeah, yeah, yeah. crafter. I still think of crafty crafter. <laughs> they all have gifts for all of us today, so uh, uh, be sure you get one of those before you leave today. Any other announcements today? Okay, let's all stand together and sing hymn number 92 Love Divine, all love to sell. Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written, 
the days that were ordained for me, and as yet they were not one of them. Let's pray. O Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. For you, Lord, are our Lord today. We declare it. We know it from our hearts. We speak it and we sing it this morning as we worship you. And we remember on this, this uh, wonderful Mother's Day, not only our, our, our Mother's Day, but first of all, we remember you. For you, Lord, formed our inner parts. You formed us and you formed us in our mother's womb. And we thank you, Lord. And we, we give you thanks that you have given us life. And you've given us life through our mothers. And we, uh, we, we just give you thanks today, whether they're uh, still alive on this earth or they're alive up in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for them. And we give them honor today. And as we give them honor again, we give you honor, Father. For, for you are a wonderful God. And we thank you that you have a wonderful plan for each one of us. And, and you're bringing that plan to pass in each of our lives as we cooperate with you. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice and to go in obedience to you in accordance with uh, your word, in accordance with the Holy Spirit who dwells within us and who and continues to move us in the direction you have, you have us to go. Pray a blessing on this congregation. I pray for, for peace and health and prosperity that is in accordance with your will, that they will be blessed as they continue to serve you. And let not any problem that comes along uh, cause them to doubt your presence and your work in their lives for, for no problem that comes along is a surprise to you. But let, let them, let us all, Lord, continue to look to you, the author and finish of our faith, Lord Jesus, and continue to work toward bringing others to a saving knowledge of yourself, of you, Lord Jesus. Help us to be faithful witnesses wherever we go, and as a church, we pray that this church will be a, continue to be, continue to be, as they always have, faithful witnesses of Jesus Christ in this community, bringing others to you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We pray that this will be a wonderful day for, for families and for, for the memories that we have of our mothers and the inheritance their present and uh, available to be contact, we pray, help us to tell them that we love them and we lift them up to you. We thank you, we give you all the praise, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
reading does not match the bulletin. It's from 2 Timothy, 1st chapter, 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience, the way my forefathers did, as I consistently remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you, even as I recall your tears, so that I may be filled with joy. For I am mindful of the sense, sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am sure, that is, I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason, I, remember, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but the power and the love of the sorrows. This, excuse me, let me read that again. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but the power and the love and discipline. This ends the reading. Yes, ma'am. 
Well, I have a narrow focus this morning, and that focus is uh, actually on mothers. And again, I, in that narrow focus, I'm dragging everyone else because it applies to you. <coughs> Grandmothers, dads, grandfathers, uncles, aunts, you're not off the hook. This is very much applies to you. We read in the Bible in of so many instances where, where people were called by God for a specific purpose or a specific ministry. For example, Paul was called by God in an amplified version of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, Paul writes this, amplified version, Paul, summoned by the will and purpose of God to be an apostle, a spe special messenger of Christ Jesus and our brothers. A special messenger. You're summoned by God this morning to be a special messenger of God to our children and the children of my house. The call of Almighty God is to be directly and specifically chosen by Him to do His will. That is the call of God. The Lord is never half out. His call is never without a purpose. And it's always His purpose that He calls us. And it is of utmost importance. It's inescapable because His call is an expression of Himself. When God calls, it's Him that calls. He's not pulling words out of the air, but it's his heart. It's, it's who he is, an expression of himself. His perfect will and his perfect plan for you. You can try to ignore the call. You can disobey God, but you do so at your own peril. I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times people have said to me over the years, you know, I've always felt like I should be a minister. I've always felt like but did they take it up? And went in a different direction. Sometimes uh, you may not notice a whole lot because you uh, said no to God. But sometimes you do notice. Two words. Remember Jonah. <laughs> we all know that. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish in the opposite direction from the presence of the Lord. Live out your Christian life before a world is watching. They watch. People watch. And they see. Let the world see indications of your relationship with the Lord. Does the, the world see Jesus in me when you live that? Not for my glory. What, with what credit do we get? At all? None. But uh, we have, we are glorified. We're glorified the Lord. And we are immensely honored because He has chosen us and gives His life to us. We don't live like the Pharisees who try to draw attention to themselves. To brag, but we want to brag and we want to boast and we want to praise the Lord. In Romans 6.13 it says, and Do not go on. Presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of life, unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. I'm going to amplify version again. And that this is what the amplified version of Romans 6.13 says. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and your mental faculties. What do you think? Your mental faculties to sin as instruments, tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life, and your bodily members and mental faculties to God, presenting them as instruments, implements of righteousness. Now, what if we lived like that and presented our, our body, our mental faculties, to the Lord before all the world? If we did that, Change. It will change our world for certain. What exactly is your call as mothers today? And grandmothers, and grandfathers, for example. You may remember at the time of this letter that Paul had apparently been arrested. I told you this uh, a few months ago. As part of Nero's persecution of Christians, he was in a cold cell in chains with no hope of deliverance. 
Paul has been abandoned by nearly all of those close to him, probably because they were afraid, afraid of the persecution, because Paul was facing an execution. In that condition, Paul wrote his second letter to Timothy, his very last letter that he wrote that we know of, urging him to hurry to Rome for one last visit. We don't know if Timothy made it, but that's the gist of the letter. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, he writes, facing death, imminent death, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ our Lord. I thank God. Please, he didn't say, please help me. I'm miserable in this cell. Can you do something? Can you get an appeal started? No. He said, I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers, night and day, longing to see you, even as I recall your tears, probably the tears that Timothy shed when, when Paul left him the last time, so that I may be filled with joy. Take special note now at what Paul says in verse 5. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt, and this is so important, for Mother's Day, yes, but for us. I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I'm sure that it is in you. Same thing, it's in you. As well. For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. God has not given us a spirit of holding back, hiding in the closet, not saying anything because we might be afraid of saying the wrong thing, but of power and love. Sound mind. Power, love, and discipline. Two of these lessons in the Christian faith came from his mother and his grandmother. Isn't that special in this day? That's where it came from. Now, my mom passed from life on this earth nine years ago and made it work. Nine years ago. Still miss her, of course. And my father, too. That he would have been a, let's see, what, um, March the 24th, he would have been 100 years old. Isn't that kind of amazing? But anyway, my mother had a profound effect on my life with an intense love. That's a, really, that's the bottom line. That he had an intense love for me and my brother. But uh, I can just remember that. He told us over and over and over and over and over, and over every day, every time I saw him, all the time. Uh, this was uh, demonstrated one time. It's kind of a strange illustration to get. But uh, I was a young kid. I, 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 was, I was certainly, uh, I was just slightly imperfect. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got into trouble once in a while. And I don't know what it was. In the, I was in the kitchen and, and I was making a racket or something, and she got so frustrated. She grabbed the, the fly swatter off the top of the top of the. I had a damn shirt on. She grabbed the fly swatter off the top of the, the uh, refrigerator and she went whack. <laughs> and for a few seconds, it left the imprint of a fly swatter. <laughs> I mean, it just, I didn't even feel it. I don't remember feeling it at all. The little whipping, so to speak, never, never, ever. She saw that, that imprint on my back. And for 50 years, she felt guilty about it. 50 years, oh my goodness. And of course, you know, I joke, joke with her about that and I try to be a little, a little mischievous. <laughs> but uh, mischievously, of course. But, uh, that hurt her so badly. And she saw the, the, the last, last thing she'd ever wanted was to hurt her children. Last thing. So it was an intense love. And I know in later years, she slammed herself with the, with the Bible. Now, not that she did before, but I remember the last years of her life, she was, she was uh, just engulfed in the Word as well as devotionals. And of course, Charles Stabbing on TV. That's all that and more. So much more. I have a profound effect in my life. Here, 
Here are three more examples. Three more examples of mothers that affected their son's faith in Jesus. Augustine, Augustine's mother, or Augustine. His mother was Monica. I call this a relentless dedication to her son's transformation in Christ. A relentless dedication. The great church leader, Augustine, from the 4th and 5th century, had a violent, unbelieving father and a godly, faithful Christian mother. It was the tearful prayers of his mother, Monica, that God used to stop him from continuing his reprobate, reprobate bad weapons. As a young man, he turned his heart toward the grace of God and the gospel. Augustine might never have become a Christian if not for his mother. He prayed for his salvation for years. And it, here's the, the uh, relentless dedication. At one point, she even sailed, this is the 4th and 5th century, she sailed from North Africa to Italy for the sole purpose of begging her son to attend church. He honored her wishes, and long story short, he was saved when he heard the gospel and the preaching of Ambrose in the book of Romans. His, uh, his teaching, his, his, his books have affected the lives of Christians for centuries. Centuries, it's still today. John Newton, I call John Newton's mother and her work as prayer and faith for a specific outcome. Pray specifically for your children. Maybe it. For your grandchildren, pray specifically as the Lord leads. John Newton, of course, wrote uh, Amazing Grace. He was raised by a godly mother, and as, as Augustine, he had an ungodly father. When he was just a child, his mother taught him to memorize hymns. He was just a child, six years old or younger, and he was memorizing hymns. Answers to the Catechism, and he was memorizing scripture. All of this before she died when John was only six years old. Before she died, she prayed that John would become a minister. Specific. I want my child to be a minister. Lord, thank you, Father. In Isaiah 55 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper the thing for which I send it. And it was sent out, it was sent from the mother's mouth and from the pages of the poor to, uh, to John Newton's mind, and even as a six year old or younger. And when he was repeating those verses, it had an effect on his heart. It changed his life, and it changed their lives, even today. 1 Thessalonians 5 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Don't stop. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking the Lord's face. Pray without ceasing. In the book, The Power of a Mother's Prayer, we read about John Newton. Over the next 33 years, it looked as though Newton's mother's prayer was nothing more than a pathetic plea that made a mockery of her faith and her trust in God. John followed his unbelieving father to sea and eventually began working for slave traders. His heart was cold and hard and his life profane. He spiraled downward out of control until... Like the prodigal son who was hungry and destitute. He became a servant of a slave trader who brutally abused him and made him the slave of his mistress on one of the plantain islands. He finally escaped and was rescued by a sea captain who had known his father. John again returned to the slave trader. On the night of March the 20th, 1748, a terrific storm came upon the ship while they were at sea, as if God's wrath were blowing out of his mouth. And he continued into the next day. Newton was summoned to the helm where he had time to reflect. He realized the wickedness of his sins and felt that they were too great and too many to be forgiven. But his journal recorded the deliverance from the storm that day. In his spiritual presence, on March 21st, 1748, God saved John Newton. And he later wrote, This is a day much to be remembered by me, and I have never suffered fast, wholly unnoticed since the year 1748. On that day, the Lord sent me from heaven on high and delivered me out of the deep waters. It was another 16 years before the final prayer of John Newton's mother was answered because he became a minister in the Church of England. He became the minister that she prayed for. It took 33 years, 33 years for, that, for, it, for the Lord to answer him, and she didn't see it come to pass. But clearly, what God had placed on John's mother's heart 
led her to pray for the purpose of the son to come to pass. Finally, Charles Spurgeon, we all know him as Charles, Charles Spurgeon, of course, and his mother's name was Eliza. And I, I say, when I look at Eliza, I think of unrelenting prayer, unrelenting, hostile. Both Charles Spurgeon's father and grandfather were both pastors, and in his sermons and books, he speaks of the spiritual influence his mother had on Eliza's birth 17 children, but only eight survived. She devoted herself to the nurture and care of her family. Her oldest son, Charles, once wrote of his mother, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the solemn words of my good mother. It was the custom on Sunday evenings while we were yet little children for her to stay at home with us. And then we sat around the table and read verse by verse, and she explained the scripture to us. I wonder how many times she took Charles before her kids. Charles.
we return to focus on the exceeding important and humble and joyful position that you as mothers have had.
share the scripture, the good news of Jesus Christ with him. Remembering that in 2 Timothy 3.16 it says all scripture is inspired. It's God breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. We don't discipline our children just by taking stuff away. Sometimes it works. But along with all that, <clears throat> along with all that, give him, give him your word. Give him your word. And let God do his, his work in your hearts. Let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you for our, our mothers. We thank you so much for your work through them and using them in a mighty and wonderful way for our upbringing and for the work that they're doing today, Lord, I pray your blessing on them and mothers and grandmothers. Thank you for them as I lift them up to you. Give them the wisdom, give them the, uh, the understanding that they need it as they continue to teach their children and their grandchildren about Jesus Christ. And lead them to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together now and sing our closing hymn number 43. Pray for the translation. Thank <laughs> you.
So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.